Well, welcome. This is our uh, Wednesday Bible study, and I'm doing it on Thursday again. I had some things going on uh, yesterday. And we're in chapter 22 of Proverbs, and we're beginning a section. It's in verse 17. And in 22, you have, beginning with verse 17, what's called sometimes 30 sayings of the wise, or this collection. And the first is verses 17 through 21. That's called saying number one, or you might call it the introduction to this. So uh, what I want to do is begin and read 17 through 21, and then we'll talk about this as we go along. Proverbs 22, verse 17. And let me set the timer here. It says, Pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach, for it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I teach you today, even you. Have I not written thirty sayings for you, sayings of counsel and knowledge, teaching you to be honest and to speak the truth, so that you bring back truthful reports to those you serve? So. <clears throat> this is an introduction to this collection, it seems, and there's an obvious break in the text here <clears throat> that um, it's, it's like the first nine chapters in the book where we have context around uh, some of these. So it's not like what we've been seeing is one proverb right after another and they're not uh, connected, they're disconnected, unconnected to each other. Uh, so in verse 17 he says... Um, incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and it might mean more advanced instruction here um, and he says apply your heart and the heart we've been seeing in Proverbs refers to the intellect the will the thinking to my knowledge the knowledge that I'm giving you uh, for it is a pleasant thing. It's pleasing. The consequences will be uh, pleasant for you. In contrast, back in chapter 3, verse 17, it talked about the strange woman and said her ways are pleasant. Or, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's not about the strange woman. That's about uh, wisdom. And it says that her ways are ways of pleasantness. And if you keep it, if you guard it and you keep it within you and let it be established together on your, on your lips, uh, ready to be practiced when you need, uh, when the occasion demands it. Verse 19, and uh, this is the, a purpose statement in order that, it's an infinitive here, to, that your trust may be in the Lord toward the Lord may your trust be. Um, that's the aim and the purpose of this instruction. And I've made known to you this day, uh, even today, it's, it's emphatic, it's like a personal touch here between the teacher and the, and the pupil. And have I not written to you, verse 20, um, these, and the NIV has, have I not written to you 30 sayings, and that's where you get the title, or the heading 30 sayings um, and uh, a variant in the Hebrew is um, is the variant is excellent things and it says in verse 21 again that I might make you know the certainty uh, and that word occurs only one time um, in the scriptures it's a technical term, it seems, that some say. That means uh, the certainty of the words of truth. That you may know the certainty of the words of truth. And then another purpose statement or infinitive, that you might bring back wor words of truth to the one who sends you. Uh, it could be, the NIV understands it, those you serve. It could be that the parents have sent the young man to be instructed and that you might bring back words of truth to them. It could also be, as the NIV understands it, uh, someone who is a, um, a, um, 
as representative of, of someone else, say in business or something. It's called to be wise. So that's the first section in its introduction. And then verses 22 and begin the second saying or the second uh, portion here. And it's really 22 and 23. And it's talking about you don't wrong the poor. So let's read those two verses and then we'll talk about them. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor. Do not crush the needy in court. For the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. Uh, it says, don't wrong the poor. And this is somebody who is defenseless because of their poverty. Don't uh, despoil or rob the, the poor, the weak, because they're weak. Because they have a weakness. And it, as Rashi understands it, an inability to resist. Um, and then he says, you don't crush the poor in, in the gate. And the gate is the place in the Hebrew Scriptures where justice is um, dispensed. And the reason for this is in verse 24. For the Lord will plead their case. Or I'm sorry, verse 23. For the Lord will plead their case. And he will exact life for life. Um, he's pleading their case. He is the one who's standing up for them in life for life. And life for life goes back to Torah and what's sometimes called lex talionis or lex talionis. And it's the uh, law of the tooth where you have eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and so on. Life for life. It just means that the punishment fits the, um, the crime. So you rob the weak, the Lord will please their uh, will plead their case and he will exact life for life. In other words, you're not just conquering a poor person, you're going to have to answer to the Lord. Now, in uh, verses 24 and 25 is a theme that's found throughout Proverbs and it's talking about anger. And here it's saying, in these 30 sayings, don't associate with uh, someone who has anger, a hot-tempered person. So let's read 24 and 25. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered. Or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Uh, don't associate with them. This, and the, this man of anger is a man of wraths. And it's plural. It's a person who readily loses their temper. And the, uh, the danger is, in verse 25, lest you learn his ways. And the way, word ways here is the word um, for paths in this book. And that becomes a snare to you, to, your, to who you are. It's a danger to your life. It can be a danger, an ultimate uh, danger for you, but it can be a danger if you're around those kind of people, uh, wrong place at the wrong time. All right, verses 26 and 27 is the next uh, statement, and uh, we'll read that. Do not be one who shakes hands in pledge or puts up security for debts. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. And again, this is a theme that's found throughout Proverbs against surety. And in chapter 6 and verse 1, you have a similar statement. Um, don't, um, don't strike hands. Don't enter into a, a, an agreement to, to uh, uh, take care of others' debts. Don't uh, shake hands in a pledge or um, put up security for, for debts. Uh, because if you don't you, if you can't pay it then he will he and the, he here's the creditor he will take your bed from under you now Torah and the law uh, w did not allow a creditor to take the very bed in Deuteronomy chapter 24 10 and following 
It talks about how that you must the creditor must show mercy. But <clears throat> this may be a harsh creditor and just ignore that. Now we come to 28 and that's a statement by itself uh, and we'll read it. It says, do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors. This boundary stone is a landmark. You have, uh, you have fields like one field joins to another field. So one person's property here and another person's here and there were boundary stones that set the boundaries. And there would be unscrupulous people who would move the boundaries to gain more uh, land. You are not to remove that, you're to respect it. <clears throat> um, in Deuteronomy 19 and, and verse 14 uh, says that. Um, it's a mark which divides the land. And so you respect the property of other people. Your fathers have set that. Verse 29, and 29 is saying number six. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. This is a person who is skilled or diligent in their, in their work and their business and they will stand before in the service of kings. <clears throat> They'll not stand before um, employers of lowly station. They'll stand before kings. So that finishes up chapter 22. Let's move into chapter 23. We have um, about seven minutes left. So the next statement is uh, chapter 23, 1 through 3, and it's talking about... Um, how to act when you're with a ruler, and it's talking about um, being circumspect, how, uh, having uh, some sort of dignity. So beginning verse, with verse 1, when you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you're given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. Um, some commentators understand this is good manners at, uh, at a table, but it's not just etiquette. If it were just that, then why would it be limited to uh, a, a ruler? Um, <clears throat> there are rules of how you would act around such a dignified uh, person. The, the teaching here is to be very cautious um, when you're in such uh, an occasion. And when you sit down with a ruler, consider well the one who is before you. Uh, the NIV has note well what is before you. Um, it's implying realize the company that, that you're in, if we understand it as consider who or him who is before you. Verse 2, we have like a humorous picture here. Uh, you put a knife to your throat, to your own throat, if you're a person given uh, to appetite. If you're uh, literally, it's the owner of a soul. It's the idea of an appetite. And you don't desire uh, this food. It's uh, probably expensive food. And seeing that, and it's interesting, the last phrase in verse 3 in the Hebrew is bread of lies. It's more than considering the food here. It's considering who you're with and also the possibility there might be a sinister purpose behind this. Um, it's, it, it, it's, so it's not just table etiquette. It's realizing the gravity of a situation, especially if you're sitting down eating with someone who is, who is a ruler. So we come to verse 4 of chapter 23, and 4 and 5 go together as saying number 8. And there are 30 of these sayings. Uh, verse 4 says, Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. 
So he's talking about riches here, and he says, uh, don't, uh, don't weary yourself. Now, it's not just riches in itself. As Scripture says, um, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money. If you make that your chief aim in life, uh, then you will be wearied, and it is the root of all evil. Uh, then he says, you cease from your own wisdom, your understanding. You put a, uh, you, you um, don't weary uh, yourself in seeking uh, to be rich. Then he says in verse 5, Will you set your eyes a vivid picture of what happens to money? Will you set your eyes on it? Um, and it's gone. For riches certainly make themselves wings like an eagle that flies toward heaven. You wonder, where is it? Where did it, where did it go? Now, I want to go over to 1 Timothy and read a passage that Paul writes. Uh, Paul writes uh, to Timothy, and Timothy's in Ephesus, and he is teaching him to teach those in Ephesus, both the rich and the, and the poor are those who may want to get rich. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says um, in verse 9, those who want to get rich, and so they've set their eyes on riches, fall into temptation and a trap in, and in into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Then you have that famous verse, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Um, and then you skip down. So that's to those who want to get rich. And then you skip down to 1 Timothy 6. And in verse 18, he says, command those to... Uh, well, in verse 17, he says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in, in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves, as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life, indeed life, life indeed, truly life. And so there's Paul's instructions to the rich uh, as well. And so back here in Proverbs, he says, when you set your eyes on, on riches, they make themselves wings, and like an eagle, they fly away to the heavens. So we're going to stop there with verse 5. So next week we'll pick up with 23.6 as we're working through these 30 sayings. And these 30 sayings can be a couple of verses, each one, you know. The next one is uh, verses 6 through 8. And uh, we'll see that next week. But let's close with a prayer. Dear Father, we bow before you and we bow with thankfulness and humility. We thank you for another day. We thank you for this time we have to open your word and to hear your book of Proverbs. Help us to be wise. Thank you for your love in sending Christ and for uh, his atoning death on the cross. Forgive us of our sins. Be with our world, Father. Be with um, especially those who uh, are mourning over the death of those close to them. Be with those who are undergoing various diseases. <clears throat> especially be with those um, who are uh, struggling with um, COVID. And we pray, Father, that you will be with all of us and we will put our trust in you. Thank you again for everything you give us. We're longing for the time when all things will be made new and we will be in your presence in purity. Forgive us of our sins and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.